So this past weekend, a couple of weekends, I, uh, I was whittling. Now, if, if you're not a Cub Scout or a seven-year-old American kid or like an 80-year-old grandfather sitting on the porch, whittling is when you take a, a perfectly good piece of wood and you repeatedly hit it with a knife until it becomes a much smaller piece of wood circumference-wise with less bark on it and things of that nature. So this is um, a Zen stick in, in process here. It's still a little raw on the ends. We haven't figured out quite how to do that yet. But I went out of it with, I went into it rather with 10 digits. And I'm happy to say that I came back out of it with all 10 digits. So success is. <laughs> I would like to think that that would be an example of right mindfulness because as I said, I went in with 10 digits and I came back out with 10 digits and it was a really sharp knife. And when you're kind of skidding along a, a round branch, you hit knots and things like that, it can kind of bounce. So you have to pay really close attention and of course, mindfulness is a, a big buzzword these days. In uh, a lot of cases, it's used in psychotherapy now, dialectical behavioral therapy is one of them. Um, I've heard that even cognitive behavioral therapy is, is incorporating a mindfulness thing. There are mindfulness-based stress reduction classes and clinics and retreats and all kinds of mindfulness things. And so far as I'm concerned, the mindfulness that matters is the one where you're mindful of right here, right now, stick hits floor, I'm paying attention to it. Um, there are plenty of issues where you could say there's less than right mindfulness. Um, like if you're walking down the street and you're going to go across the street and you're paying attention to the traffic really well, but you neglect to pay any attention to the curb you're about to step off and you end up face first in the pavement, that would be not quite so right mindfulness. And then there is what you could call not right mindfulness at all, which would be, I'm figuring that most um, mass murderers, for example, are probably very mindful when they're murdering. However, as to whether that would qualify as right mindfulness or correct mindfulness is uh, another matter for discussion. And the correlation between right and correct is an interesting one because there are a lot of uh, people who will use, well, quote accurately, but miss the meaning of uh, the third patriarchs, Jin Jin Ming saying, uh, the great way is easy for those with no preferences. So no good, no bad, no right, no wrong. Uh, it's all good, so to speak. Um, and that may very well be true in the absolute, but as I said, if you're stepping off a curb into traffic, it'd be nice if you landed foot after foot rather than face after foot. So, uh, Zen Master Sun San has uh, some things about uh, the word correct. Um, in one case, he's talking about uh, correct life as uh, led by practicing the uh, precepts and 
side note, a little additional Sangha business. Congratulate uh, Melinda for Huamin, as she is now known, on taking the Bodhisattva precepts a couple of weeks ago. So uh, here is where Sungsan uses the word correct, which you could also use the word right. What is the meaning of Sangha, the treasure of Sangha? Sangha is the ethical side of our life, which means having correct life. Correct life comes from your will, from your center. This means taking away bad habits and following a good way, which helps all beings. If your center is not moving, then having correct life is possible. We also refer to that as correct direction. That's the Buddha's basic teaching, keeping a correct direction. Why do I want this or that? Only for me or for all beings? In order to keep our correct direction, however, we need some basic rules or guidelines for our life. These rules or precepts always point us towards saving all beings. Precepts are not rules to limit our actions. Precepts mean correct direction. If you follow these precepts, you attain goodness. Then only correct action appears by itself. You don't check inside, you don't check outside. Moment to moment, just doing it is possible because these precepts already point the way to our correct job of helping all beings. Then you can believe in your true self 100%. In Mahayana practice, my precepts and my practice are not for me, they are for all beings. So I keep these precepts not for myself, but to help other beings. This means that sometimes in some situations, breaking the precepts can help others much better than holding the precepts. If your mind is clear, then keeping the precepts is correct practice, and breaking the precepts is also correct practice. The most important thing is, why do you do it? Is it only for you, or is it for all beings? You're standing on that same street corner, and you're paying attention to the traffic, but you're standing on, on the corner itself. And you see there's a little child that's going to go racing off directly off the curb and into traffic. Actually, there's two of you standing there. Now, which one is correct action? The monk who grabs hold of the little child and pulls her back in away from the traffic, or the monk who contemplates the not good, not bad, not correct, not incorrect, no life, no death, no birth, or all of those scenarios. Correct direction as so San referred to it, is that action we take before we even think, that before thought moment where child is running in traffic, grab child back. There's no thought required, it's just save child, grab. That same sort of before thought action is a guide to our true selves, our true nature, our Buddha nature. We don't have to contemplate Buddha nature. We don't have to even contemplate whether the precept is being broken or whether it's being kept. We don't need to do any of those things. 
when we act before thought in the mind of saving all beings, then we are performing correct action, we are performing Buddha action, we're performing Bodhisattva action, and that is correct action in that case. And with that, thank you.